Hello, um, I'm here with Olympian Series 4, Dame Kelly Holmes, and this sculpture's now finished. It's This is the piece that's been cast by Lorraine Grandi at the uh, Creative Art Casting Studios. So I made the original piece out of, first of all, casting Dame Kelly Holmes' body, putting the clay in the mould, taking it out, working on that, moulding that, and putting all the surface decoration that you can see here on it, um, leaving it to dry for about three weeks, it went in the kiln, it came out of the kiln. I sprayed it ready for casting and then it went off to Lorraine at the casting studio and she made uh, a silicone jacket for it um, and uh, backed that up with fibreglass to support it, opened that up and then cast into it. And if you go back to watch a video of Lorraine at the art casting studio, you can actually see the back part of Dame Kelly's piece lying lying in the mould and um, Lorraine's now spent quite a long time polishing it off so that the the brass that's um, it, the, the brass is actually on the surface um, it's mixed in with the gel coats that sits on the surface so it has actually got real brass in it but it was introduced in a powdered form so that when it's polished back actually becomes like the solid metal so the whole surface is more or less solid metal on it um, but it's a th it's it's a fairly thin um, compared to you know obviously if it had been uh, cast in solid metal it would cost me multiple thousands and it um, and the bronzes that we do are very expensive very very heavy um, but they last about three thousand years one of these will last about one hundred and fifty years which will obviously outlive all of us but um, there, there's a difference using this type of method and. Uh, once again, just running through it, the um, Dame Kelly chose for her her front area of her body to depict Athens, and she chose to do ancient Athens because she was very pleased to have won her double medals. They're here, up here, those are her two gold medals. Um, she won those at Athens, and she was pleased to have done that in the place where the Olympics originated. So this is all to do with going back in time, considering sort of the history of the early games. There are elements that I took here from photographs um, of the Olympic, the original Olympic site and the Olympic Stadium. There's um, I hope I just pull this down. There's an archway here. I found some photographs that were taken over there of the archway and sort of dilapidated walls that were part of the original Olympic Stadium. There's um, a horse's head here. I actually drew this from going up to see the Elgin Marbles, up uh, or part of the Elgin Marbles that's kept at the British Museum, and that came from the um, Parthenon. And I wanted the horse there, the discus thrower here, as well as sort of like the running nymphs to sort of suggest the range of um, sports at the traditional Olympic Games. In the classical um, Olympic Games, equine sports were very, very important, um, as they are now, but they didn't get, they had more of a focus then. So I wanted the horse's head there. Um, I've got a temple over here. Let's just see if I can turn her around a bit more for you to see the temple. Okay, this, this here, is a temple um, that was actually sited in Turkey but was uh, based on Greek myths and legends and had in it a series of figures, unfortunately headless figures, but they, they're the Nereid and they were daughters of Neptune, if I understand rightly, who were very sort of fleet of foot nymphs who could run so fast they could run across water. Um, and it seemed to be suitable if we were doing classical Greek and, and basing this on a woman who can run incredibly fast. It seemed, you know, sort of like quite a good analogy there. There's um, a larger image of one of those nymphs there. If you haven't been to the British Museum and you can do, go and have a look because the collections are amazing. There's the discus thrower who's actually, we've got a copy at the V&A there. There's the Union flag running through the background, so that helps it look like um, armour. And then, uh, let me just move her back a bit, so that you can see her a bit more clearly. Okay. And then the back of her is like that. Let's see. I'm going to move her further away from you again. You can see her a bit more. Okay. Uh, 
and she's sort of one of those people that has a very slender waist, very strong shoulders. It's quite a powerful piece, I think, but, you know, I was lucky working with her. Right then, bye.